it's time to tell my full story. Don't ever leave, don't ever leave. You see what's underneath, what's underneath. And you love me for me, love me for me. You love Hi everybody, my name is Enrica and welcome to Unexplainable Grace. I thank you so much for tuning back in. On this channel we talk about God's goodness, His mercy, and His grace. I've been on YouTube now for three years and if you saw my previous vlog, I just recently attended a conference called Creatives Conference. And in that conference, God set me free. God truly, truly set me free to be able to loose my mouth to tell really of his unexplainable grace in my life, to let you know the depths of it. One of the biggest reasons I was scared to do YouTube when God put it on my heart um, a few years ago was because I just knew God was going to have me to tell the truth of my story. And I was scared. I was so scared. And I didn't want to do it, so I ran. I ran from the call to speak his word online. But he got a hold of me, and I spoke his word, and I gave the messages that he gave me to tell. But now he's been patient with me, he's been gentle, and he didn't have me do anything that I wasn't ready to do. And now he set me free in that conference to be my authentic self to tell the world of God's goodness, of his mercy, and his true, unexplainable grace. A couple months ago, I wrote a piece, a words of the heart piece, called What Kind of God Is This? And now I want to share that with you. Stay tuned. What kind of God is this? that would allow people to sin against me in this way. What kind of God? What kind of God is this that would allow people to sin against me in this way? That would allow me of all people to feel such pain? What kind of God is this that would burn me? I mean, allow him to burn me though I cared, though I loved, though I saw why do I now have to live with herpes? What kind of God is this? Do you hear me? Are you there? Who are you? What are you? Is exactly what Christ yelled as he hung on the cross. I thought you loved me. Why am I going through this? I thought I was your son, yet my muscles are coming loose from my skin. This hurts, God. I can't breathe, Father. The weight of their sin is too much combined with my weight hanging from the nails. What kind of God is this? The crowd mocked. That he can't even rescue himself from the cross. Where's his might? Where's his power? What kind of God is this? The witnesses yelled three days later when he rose from the tomb, just like he said. What kind of God is this? Said Thomas, when he saw the holes in his hands and the piercing in his side. What kind of God is this? That knew I would joyfully live a life of sin, throw the treasure of my body to the fire, get burned and blamed it on him. Yet I still took the sin, the sex, the blame on the blasphemy and let forgiveness bleed on the cross. What kind of God is this who came down to meet me right in my room in the depth of my heart and told me after everything he still loved me? What kind of God is this that two years later sent down his healing angel and said,
well, that's my story. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, I'm just playing. <laughs> oh boy, this is this is real. This is real life. This is where God has me, and this is my story. This is my story. In 2011, that was the worst year of my life. Um, I went. Oh, I was in college. I was away at college. I was 20 years old. And I was in a relationship with a guy and, you know, we were newly into it, head over heels, just like growing in love, actually growing in lust with one another, um, even though I really did care about him and he really did care about me. And in February of that year, I found out that I contracted herpes from him. And my life within a moment of getting that diagnosis completely, utterly changed in a way I could have never, ever, ever, ever foreseen. Um... I contracted herpes orally um, from him through oral sex. He was, you know what I'm saying. And my life within that second, I everything that I thought I knew about myself utterly and completely changed. I was now a statistic. I was now damaged goods. I was, I lost my sexual freedom. No one would ever want me. The idea of marriage and children went out the window as I started to research and learn more about this disease that I now walked with, that I now had. I stayed in my room for three days straight in the dark, weeping. I wept and I wept and I wept. I had a roommate during that time and I thank God for her till this day because not once did she ask me what was wrong. Because if she had, I could have never answered her. It would have killed me. Not once did she ask me. She gave me my time. I didn't leave the room. I sat there while my body took on a whole new form that was foreign to me that I, I didn't know. And it hurt. It hurt me physically. It pained me. To sit, it pained me to go to the bathroom. It pained me physically. It pained me mentally to digest what just happened. What literally just took place. And in the midst of all that, I was so angry at God. What the words that you heard me say a couple of moments ago in that poem were real. I screamed and I yelled and I could not understand why me, which is oftentimes the first thing that people say when they get an STD is why me? Why me? And I blamed God and I was angry with God because I wasn't even promiscuous. That was only the second guy I'd ever been with. I was, I, 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 this isn't supposed to be me. I'm not with a lot of people. I have friends that have tons of sex with other people and that's never happened to them. Why me? Why me? I was so angry. And soon my anger turned into hearing the devil's voice of saying, you're being punished. Are you kidding me? You went and did what you did? And now you're asking God, why you? God's punishing you. 
You shouldn't have been having sex with this guy. God's punishing you. And he doesn't want to hear from you. I couldn't talk to anybody. This is the first time a lot of my close friends and people who know me are even hearing this message. And hearing this truth of what I went through in 2011. I couldn't talk to anybody. No one. No family, no friends. I was utterly alone. And the only person that I thought I could probably a little bit talk to was God. And now the devil told me he doesn't even want to hear from me. Heaven has closed its doors. So from that, I believed it. And I didn't talk to God. Because I thought he was angry with me. And he was punishing me. So by myself, I sat with this new label and this new identity that I've been given of an outcast to society. And I fell into this dark place of giving up. And I've never been a person to give up on things. I've always been one who says, okay, something happens. I just got to dust myself off, pull myself up by my bootstraps and keep it going. Heartbreak. Okay. Dust myself off. Okay. Failure, disappointment, dust myself off and keep it going. But this for the first time in my life, I didn't want to keep going. I was okay with giving up. There was no point to anything. My life was ruined as I knew it. There was no point to anything. And I swear on everything that it was an angel who came and took me out of my bed in my college dorm, got me dressed and brought me to class because I didn't even want to go to school. I didn't want to do anything. I said, there's no point. There's no point. I'm done. It was not me that got myself, I swear on everything it wasn't me. Because I don't know how I made it from that dark room that I had been in to the classroom. And I went. And I walked through life and I went. And I was a big partier back in those times. And I drank for fun and a turn up, all about the turn up. I've talked about a little bit on my page before. But drinking no longer became a fun turn up tool for me anymore. It became my way of escape. Partying became a way of escape. If I can just drink and get so drunk that I can just escape my reality even for a couple of hours in the night then I needed that. I needed that escape. And drinking became a dependency for me when I went out. Partying became a, a dependency for me because I didn't like my life. I hated my life. I was laughing on the outside because I had to keep up the persona and the get up that everything was okay. So my friends wouldn't ask me any questions. I had to tell the jokes. I had to be the funny one. But on the inside, I cried myself to sleep every night. I was alive, but I was not living. I was dead on the inside. I was so dead. <sighs> Parting was my escape and drinking became my escape and my dependency. But the only problem was that with that is in my drunkenness and in my stupor, I could come out of mentally my real life and for a second or a couple of hours be somebody else. But the problem is that when the alcohol wore off and I woke up the next morning, there I was back in my reality, back to face the, the real life me, that I was damaged goods, that God was punishing me. He didn't want to hear from me. And I was tainted forever. And that's the mentality that I walked in. That's the mentality I walked in for a year. And nobody knew. It was just me. No one knew. Until New Year's Eve of 2011, I grew up in a very strict household with my mom 
And now looking back, she wasn't strict. She was being a mother. She was doing what she was called to do, which was to protect her children. But I looked at it as strict. I didn't get to go to parties. I didn't get to have a nightlife as a teenager and all that type of stuff. So when I went to college, I really went out. So I was 20 years old now. I was 21, New Year's Eve, 2011. And I never got to go out on New Year's Eve before. And I was determined I'm going out. I'm 21 now. I done been away to college. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not even going to ask my mom if I could go out. I'm going out. And like I said, I was a big drinker. So I had a very high tolerance. It didn't, um, it took a lot for me to, 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 to get really drunk. So pre-gaming, that's regular. That's just warm up for me. That's nothing. So as I'm getting ready, and my friend, I was going to go out with some friends, and one of my friends was going to meet me. And I'm pre-gaming, and the amount of alcohol that I pre-gamed, it was like regular, regular amount of alcohol that I would have pre-gamed, and it barely would have even like done anything, just like barely a little buzz, um, because I'm going to keep drinking throughout the night to really get turned up. So I just pre-gamed a little bit. Um, of alcohol and my friend you know she's pre-gaming too and her tolerance is even higher than mine she never throws up she never gets sick hers is even higher so she comes and she gets me and we walk down the block to my other friends that we're getting ready to pick up and then we're gonna go out and she's not ready yet and that had to have been God she's not ready yet so m me and my friend we had to wait for her and as we're waiting for her. I, I fe start to feel so drunk. I start to feel like I have drank like a whole bottle, like a whole tall bottle of rum by myself. The way that I'm feeling. My head is spinning. I'm just feeling so drunk. Way more drunk than I should ever feel with the amount that I drank. And I just start slowing down and I'm in her house and my friend starts to have symptoms as well. Just being overly drunk in the amount that she drank. And her, my friends whose house we're at, her parents are there, her family's there. Like they're seeing us tripping up over ourselves. They're seeing all this happen. Before I know it, my friend that I walked to the other friend's house with is over the banister throwing up, puking. She never pukes. She's over the banister puking up. I'm getting so sick. And little did I know that this was all God's doing. That we were so sick, we couldn't even go out that night. We could not even go out that night. My whole plan that I had was completely flipped upside down. We both just had to end up going home. And I went home and I didn't even know that that would be the last night my lips would ever touch a bottle. I wasn't thinking about God. He was not on my mind. I was trying to turn up. I was trying to escape my problems. I wanted to leave my reality. I wanted to get drunk. I wanted to not be myself. I wanted to be somebody else. I wanted to have a false sense of freedom. That's what I wanted. God didn't want anything to do with me. That's what I believe. And I'm not thinking about God. I'm thinking about escaping. I'm thinking about trying to live as normal as I can around other people with this huge secret inside of me. That's what I'm trying to do. But God's eye was on me the entire time. The entire time. I went home that night and the next day I had a horrible hangover. Horrible hangover. And in the night, I was on my laptop in my room watching YouTube videos on natural hair. And I was really into natural hair and trying to learn my hair at that time. And in the margin where there's usually videos that connect to whatever topic it is that you're watching, I see a video with a title that has nothing to do with the videos that I'm watching. And it says, God healed my herpes. And the way I grew up, I never learned about healing. I attended a church that didn't talk about healing, a Baptist church. They didn't talk about miracles. They didn't talk about the Holy Spirit um, as far as doing miraculous things and supernatural things. I never learned about that. I learned about God and you don't want to go to hell, so you need to get baptized and you need to give your life to God. That's what I learned. 
So I, first of all, I was intrigued because I never heard anybody say God healed him. And then, of course, the fact that she's talking about the same disease that I now have, I'm intrigued. I don't know what this is going to be about, but I'm intrigued. And I click on it. And it ends up being this woman telling her testimony and her story. And it ended up being a four part long video, each 20 minutes long. And I watched the entire thing, one part after the other. And she tells her story about how when she was a, a, a teenager, she got raped. And her rapist gave her herpes. And not only that, he got her pregnant. And she had, she went and she got an abortion. And after she got the abortion is when she found out that she had herpes. And she had this thing and went into this dark place. And along her journey, she found the Lord and God started to deal with her. And she started to learn about healing and learn about healing power and God's ability. And she prayed and, and she believed, but she wasn't getting healed. And, and she, she was just believing God, but it wasn't happening. Believing God, but it wasn't happening. But there was a part of her that doubted. She believed that God could do it for others, but she wasn't sure he could do it for her. And then that came a time in that day where she just believed. She put 100% faith in and zero doubt that God could. And he did. He did. And she was married. And she had a baby. And when she was pregnant, her doctor that was taking care of her ran blood work and said that she was free. She had no herpes. Jesus. Jesus. And as this woman told her testimony, I'm there with eyes wide open. And at the end, she starts to talk about Jesus. And she starts to talk about Christ and his love for people and his love for us. And how he has a paradise that he's created for us. And in that moment, I started to hone in on that. Because I never heard anybody talk about God and talk about heaven as a paradise. I only hear people talk about just heaven, just textbooks, just heaven and hell. It's just a place, two different places. But this is the first time that I ever heard anybody describe it as a, a paradise. And I started to think of God creating this place without pain. This place without, without, without disease, without sickness, without illness. And I started to think about earth and this world and how it was filled with sickness and how it was filled with poverty and abuse and violence and hunger and, 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 um, and power hungry people and war and all these different things that I saw. I wasn't even thinking about myself. I was literally thinking about the world and how disastrous it was. And for me to think that and see that Christ, God, has a paradise where none of this exists? None of it? There's no such thing as pain? Are you kidding me? And I said, God, even with everything that I've done, the life that I've lived, I totally have not cared about you. The only prayers that I've ever prayed to you was for my self-benefit. Why well, I need you to get me through something or get me out of something or, or give me some money or help me pass a test in school. It's all been about me. I never served you. I never sought you. I sought my flesh. I sought my own desires. And you still went on the cross you still took the punishment for my sin that I deserve so that I could be seated up in paradise in a place where there's no pain, no sickness, when there's complete perfection and peace. You did that for me. You love me that much. The love that I've been searching for my entire life in these different relationships. The love that I was looking for that turned around and burned me. You had it all along. And I said, God, I got to be with you. I got to get there. I don't care what it takes. I have to get there. I have to get there. This is real. I have to get there. And on that night, January 2nd, 2012, 
in the middle of the night, it had to be one o'clock in the morning, I started to cry. I started to beg God for forgiveness. I started to ask God into my life. I said, God, I have to be there with you whatever it takes. Take my life. Please do what you have to do. I can't ever repay you, but please just help me. I have to be with you. And I weeped and I cried for three hours. I never cried like that. Ever. Ever. I was the one that believed that crying was weak. Crying was weak. Except for the, the past year of mild depression that I was walking through and sadness and heaviness where I cried every night and that type of a pain. Before that point, I didn't cry. If I cry this for two seconds and I'm moving on because crying is for the weak. I was strong. I was a rock. But I cried before the feet of Jesus on that night. Hallelujah. I cried. And I cried. And as I cried, I released and I released and I cried before God. And for the first time in my life, the word of God wasn't just some story that somebody was telling me about that I couldn't relate to. It wasn't just about some God that may or may not be real who's sitting up in the sky somewhere at a far away distance. It wasn't, I don't know what happens after death anymore, so I'm scared of it, so I just don't even want to think about it. It was Jesus came in the form hallelujah of man it was God came down and put on my sin it was God chased me it was God met me in my depression it was God met me in my most shameful moment it was God loved me when I didn't love him it was God became real and his words became life for the first time God's words became life they lifted off of the pages and met me in my heart and when I was done crying and praying and talking to God, I felt so light. I felt a lightness over me. And it was insane to me because I didn't know I was heavy. I had no idea. I had no idea that I was walking around with baggage of pain and woundedness and rejection and all of the things that come with living life in this sinful world. Everything we've experienced from childhood up until adulthood. Everything that we just keep taking on. Keep having wound after wound. Keep limping. Gash after gash. Hurt after hurt. Stress after stress. It was normal. You dust yourself off and keep going with the bags. That's the part of the saying that they leave out. You dust yourself off and keep on going with the weight, with the bags. And for the first time, God cut. He cut off the bags. He cut off the guilt of sin. He cut off shame. Hallelujah. And I was light. I was light. And I started to seek God and pray to God. And I wanted to learn God and learn who he was. And I, di I didn't know much about much, but I knew, okay, I'm living for God now. That means I can't drink. I, I, I can't, um... I can't do drugs, I can't drink or do drugs, I can't curse, and I can't have sex. I didn't fully understand why, I just knew Christians didn't do that. I just knew that, so I, I, my mind was just changed, and I was just in this new place now. And I knew now that God could heal me. God could heal my body because then this woman, her husband, had some other videos as well where he started to talk about disease and talk about sickness and what it actually was and how it actually was spiritual and how we are in a fallen world and the enemy has perverted God's perfect gift of sex and he's perverted it and, and cursed us and brought disease and brought these spirits into it 
and we walk around with these things and all types of illness is spiritual and God is able to set the captives free. God is able to by his touch and by the word and by faith, he can remove what was tainted. He can cleanse and wash clean. And I started to learn these things, that illness was spiritual and that this was a spirit that was in me that by me, me having sex and, and, and I was outside of God's will and it was just tainted. The enemy fell, was in the middle of this and he came into me. From that guy, he came into me. And now I was walking with this spirit. But now God is teaching me that I can be free and I can be healed. And I start praying, God, I know you can heal me. God, please heal me. As I'm learning about God and I'm learning about who Jesus is and I'm reading the Bible and I'm discovering, oh my goodness, how I've been thinking. My mind is starting to be renewed. I'm starting to get set free in other areas. I pray for God to heal me. And I pray for almost two years, for two years I pray. And I just knew, I knew that God could do it. And I trusted that he could do it. And I believed. And I grew in Christ. And two years later, I was in church. I thank God that he placed me in a church that believed in miracles. That believed in the supernatural move of God to do what is impossible to man. I thank God that that's where he placed me. And in this church, the Holy Spirit was moving on this day. And the Holy Spirit hit one particular man of God who was such a profound teacher who really blessed me in my life and has contributed so much to my spiritual growth. And he was anointed to heal. That was a part of his testimony as well, how God healed him from when he was sick with something else. God healed him and God anointed him to heal and the Holy Spirit hit him. It was moving through the house one day and the Holy Spirit hit him. And he was at the altar and he said, if there is anybody that has ailment or sickness and needs to be healed, come and touch my right hand because the Holy Spirit wants to heal you. And the Holy Spirit was moving through this man. And I was in my seat and I had been praying for God to heal me now for two years. And I believed that he could do it. But yet there was a part that was like, should I go up? Is this really going to happen? Is it, is it really going to be now? I, I was hesitant. But the Holy Spirit helped me just go. Just go. Nobody knew in my church. No one knew what was going on. Why I was going up for healing. But I went up. And I touched this man's hand. And I fell. And when I fell. I started to feel a surge go through my body and it scared me because I didn't know what was happening. I saw the Holy Spirit moving throughout the church and other people, but I never experienced a manifestation of God for myself in my physical body. So I was scared. I didn't know what was taking place and I, I, I was bugging out and my, my legs started to shake. Both legs started to shake uncontrollably by themselves. And my first lady came over to me and she saw me. I, I was on my back on, on the ground and my legs were shaking and she came over to me. And I, she didn't know what was going on, but God must have spoke to her. I know he had to have spoken to her because she then started to put her hands on my, um, right below my belly button, on my stomach, like right over my womb. And I'm like, why is she putting her hands there? And my, if my legs are shaking, shouldn't she put her hands over my legs, you know, to be praying over that? Because I don't know what's going on, but she put her hands right there. And I knew hey, it's just Jesus, God is doing. And God spoke to me and he said, you don't be scared, it's me. Don't be scared, it's me. I'm going to heal you. And I stopped, I released and I said, okay, God. And I trusted him. And she began to pray. And she began to pray. Jesus and she began to pray and as she prayed in the spirit and my legs were shaking I felt the power of God go through my complete lower half it was like a newness came over me and it went from the place where she was praying all the way down to my feet 
And I felt more new than before when I was even a virgin. It was like God completely replaced me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I knew that I was healed. I knew I was healed. Glory to God. Glory to God. And that was two, that was five years ago. Jesus. 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 Five years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. In February of 2013. Hallelujah. God healed me. He healed me. And I've been made new. And I haven't seen a sign. I haven't seen outbreaks of herpes since then. God has made me new. Glory to God. The day I got healed, I ran home from church and wrote these words that I want to share with you today. Dated February 5th, 2013. The healing is here. The God we serve is truly unexplainable. Every time I used to write, my eyes would be filled with tears because I felt unloved by a guy. Now, whenever these tears fall, it's because one man has such an endless, inexplainable love for me that he died so I could live. He died. That's what the devil tries to do. He tries to kill in every way possible. If he can't get you physically, he'll hit your emotions. No luck there, then he goes after your brain or your mind. Let's say God protected you through all those attacks. Then the enemy strikes after the most precious, your spirit. The devil is a liar. Liar, liar. Nothing can overcome or outshine the love Christ had, has, and is going to have for me in the future. My spirit calms and melts at the thought of my Savior. He died so I can have, and I refuse to at all any dirty devil to take that away from me. Hallelujah. My spirit has been born again. My body has been restored. Hallelujah. And I am forever indebted to you, Lord. My God, my Jehovah. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. That's what I wrote. Raw. Right, right when I got healed. Right when I got healed. And I, I, I just, I, I couldn't believe it, but I believed it at the same time. I believed it at the same time. Because God's word cannot return unto him void. And he's so faithful. He's so faithful. And I thank God. I thank him so much for healing me. And I know he's done it so that he can heal somebody else. Just like he healed that other woman. So, so she can tell her story and set me free. When she was telling her story, I wasn't even concerned about herpes. I was focused on Christ. I was like, who is this God? Who is this God that loves me like this? So I am doing the same here. God has set me free to tell this story. And the world needs to know. He's calling me to be a stigma breaker. Because I walked around with the stigma and this label of this shame. Not knowing that God loved me. Thinking I was outcast and I was damaged goods. Not knowing that Jesus died for me. And if you're watching this and you have herpes, no, or any other STD, any disease that's sexually transmitted, you are not worthless. You are not damaged. You are loved beyond measure. Jesus sees you and he loves you and he's pursuing you through this video. He loves you. Glory to God. Glory to God. I need to be my authentic self and tell my story. And God is setting me free to do that. And this channel is going to take a turn. He's put on my heart to do a healing series. To break down what healing is. What does the Bible say about illness and sickness? And what does it say about disease? And what does it say about healing and God's power in that? And I pray that you tune in for the next couple of videos as God leads me to teach on these things because he is 
opened my eyes to so many spiritual things. And it's time for you to have that knowledge. I thank God for healing my body, but most of all, I thank God for healing my wretched, sinful heart. For looking at me, who cared nothing about him, who only thought about herself, and yet he thought everything about me. And he thinks everything about you. If you are the only one on this earth, the only sinner, Jesus would have came for you. He would have gave his life for you. God would have came down in the form of man for you. Because he desires you. And he doesn't want to spend eternity without you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I thank God. I thank him so much for freeing me to be able to post this. And I pray it reaches who it's supposed to reach. God bless you. I'm excited for my channel. I'm excited for the turn that it's taking to talk about spiritual things, to get down to the nitty gritty, to get into God's word, to have our minds open to the spiritual realm and see the power that we really do have in faith. God bless you guys. I love you so much. And remember, continue in his unexplainable grace. Bye. Don't ever leave, don't ever leave. You see